Hello, welcome to BioGrade TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of Albert John Lutuli When the rain keeps pouring, a particular African tribe, Zulu, has a name for it. They call it Mvumbi. For Albert John Lutuli, popularly called Mvumbi, it is not because he was born in the raining season, but for his continuous effort in a series of peaceful protests against apartheid, the white minority government in Southern Africa. Those acts earned him a Nobel Peace Prize in 1960, the first African to be so awarded. Albert John Mvumbi Lutuli was born in the year 1896 in Bulawayo, Southern Rhodesia now Zimbabwe. Since he lost his father at a tender age in 1906, he was groomed and tutored in Grootville town by his uncle, Martin Lutuli, who was the tribal chief, the first democratically elected chief, translator and interpreter of the Zulu ruling house. His uncle was as well the founder of the Natal Native Congress, which later became the African Native Natal Congress, where Albert began to take shape politically in what he subsequently took charge and transformed to the known African National Congress, ANC. Albert Lutuli went on to become a renowned activist and politician. Also, his career as a remarkable teacher will forever be remembered. Because of his determination to bring education to the African population, he often traveled by motorbike to teach at different institutions, training future teachers, alongside Z.K. Matthews founded the African Teachers Association. Subsequently, he also co-founded the Zulu Cultural and Language Society, aimed at promoting Zulu history and culture across board. No matter how much we resonate with Albert's political, teaching and civil rights activities, as well as being the voice of the people, it won't be thorough if we don't add his religious lifestyle as a Christian who sharpened his voice through spiritual sermons. He was the leader of the Young Men's Christian Association and found sweet love with music, conducting the Sunday Church Choir and led the Choir Association in Natal, whereby after a while, he with Ruben Kaluza founded the Adams College School of Music in 1935. The best way to describe Albert John Mvumbi Lutuli is a born champ. Since everything he touched turned gold, he was eventually compelled to become the new chief of Natal in 1936, where he governed with wisdom, integrity, and empathy. However, no matter how good one is, we are bound to have enemies who feel threatened by whatever doesn't favor them. Interestingly, same scenario played out in 1953 when Albert Lutuli was forcefully removed from office as chief of Natal by the Appetite government since he began to question the 1913 and 1936 Land Act which segregates and weaken the black populace. Chief Albert Lutuli countered the Land Acts, which was designed to favor the whites and push the blacks into the interior to own a small portion of land. He further tackled the white-led government when they empowered the white farmers to buy cattle at a cheaper rate from black farmers. He stated, Your solution is to take our cattle today because you already took our land yesterday. In 1941, the Atlantic Charter was issued by American President Franklin D. Roosevelt and British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, declaring the right of all people to self-determination and restoring self-government. But unfortunately, the Atlantic Charter didn't hold water as South African Prime Minister Jan Smoltz claimed that self-governance is only applicable to countries occupied by fascist powers not to European colonies. Things got rather interesting in 1943 when Albert, through the African National Congress, 
demanded the right of African self-determination, a bill of rights, racial equality, universal suffrage, and non-racial citizenship for blacks in South Africa. However, his request was not granted. He dusted his political suit and went on to assume office in the Native Representative Council, NRC, in 1946, an advisory body to the government. Then Albert seized the opportunity to restate his former demands, yet the government turned a deaf ear, which now seemed frustrating to him. He voiced, The NRC is a toy telephone requiring me to shout a little louder to no one. Hence, the Native Representative Council became handicapped and was finally dissolved by the government in 1952. It was a bittersweet story for Albert Lutuli in 1955, who now suffered partial stroke but wouldn't let that hamper his freedom struggle. He organized a memorable Congress of the People tagged Freedom Charter, held in Cliptown on the 26th of June 1955, a two-day packed event where the unforgettable manifesto was presented, emphasizing that South Africa belonged to all who lived in it. The presentation was accepted and approved by all the racial and political congresses across South Africa. Albert Lutuli, who couldn't grace the stage due to ill health and government restrictions placed on him since 1953, while he was the leader of the African National Congress, sent a powerful speech, stating in part, the African people do not want crumbs. They demand what is their rightful heritage in the land of their birth, Africa. Our demand is, and always will be, back from tribalism, forward to a non-racial democracy. Good things find their way around good people. So it was in December 1960 when government finally lifted the ban placed on Albert John Mbumbilutuli to permit him alongside his wife, Nokukanya Bengu, whom he married way back 1927, blessed with seven children, to attend the outstanding Peace Prize ceremonies in Oslo, where he was awarded the prestigious Nobel Peace Prize. Still on good things happening to good people, Albert was elected rector of the University of Glasgow, where he served until 1965 during which he published his autobiography, Let My People Go. Whether he coined his book title from the popular Bible story in ancient Egypt will be a story for another day. But hey, let's not forget Albert was a preacher man in church too. Finally, the inevitable visitor came to him having served the people for over 30 years and was laid to rest on the 27th of July, 1967. What have we missed out of this biography of Lutuli? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.